patient is a 20 year old male who punched a gas tank in Puerto Rico. Um, he was initially splinted in a short um, bowler resting splint in Puerto Rico as his x-rays were initially read as negative. He then came back from his vacation, um, presented to our emergency department with um, persistent right uh, wrist pain and difficulty with pronosupination. He was found to have this right distal ulna dislocation. He was otherwise neurovascular intact, flows reduced and placed into a sugar tongue splint and pronation. Uh, next patient is a 10 year old female who uh, stuck her hand in a washer. So just, just go back to those initial x-rays of the uh, dislocation. So you can see the Savoy notch is not congruent here. So um, yeah, that's, that's something just, you know, look at, look at that x-ray on the left and you know, your mind's got to tell you something's not right because the, the ulnar head's not sitting in the same way notch. So that's something that an ER doctor might miss, but you shouldn't miss that. Can you show the reduction film again? Yeah, there you go. So why does it end up wide on that AP view? We sometimes see that. What's going on there? Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not, he, I mean, he certainly still has, he has an injury to his DRUJ. Um, there might be some interposed tissue in there. I'm not, you know, I'm not hundred percent sure. He's also really, you know, very swollen there. Um, Once you reduce it, was it stable? Yeah, he was stable after, you know, after the reduction, it was a very like palpable plunk back into place. Um, he was, when he initially presented, he had like absolutely zero pronosupination. He was completely stuck in, a, in like a semi-supinated um, position. But afterwards I took him, I was using, I used fluoroscopy um, and I took him through a full range of motion, pronosupination, flexion extension, and it was, it was completely stable. Yeah, I, I might, it might be hard to see, but does it look like there's a possible old ulnar styloid non-union in there on the AP that you're showing? Yeah, I thought, uh, on like, uh, I could really only see it on this view. And when I was using fluoro, I didn't really appreciate it. Um, I didn't see it until I put did, did these like post splint films. I didn't really see anything on the initial um, injury x-rays that made me concerned for it at all. Um, I'm not sure if it's just an artifact of the splint, but when we see him in the clinic, I know it's going to get new x-rays and we can get a better view with the splint off. What ligaments do you think are torn to allow that injury to occur? Um, probably the, the volar uh, distal radial ulnar ligaments. You know, he might also have a um, like TFCT tear as well, um, especially if he has this like ulnar styloid fracture. But in order to get the volar dislocation, I think the volar ligaments need to be torn. How long, and how long are you going to mobilize them? Um, I read uh, some varying reports. There was a case report. I think volar dislocations are pretty uncommon compared to the normal like dorsal dislocations. They are recommending putting like three to four weeks of an above elbow, like long arm cast, um, and then transitioning after that, if, as long as it's stable at the follow-up x-rays to a, a short arm cast that's well molded um, for two to three weeks. So overall, maybe like six weeks, six, seven weeks.